Hi, and everybody, welcome to our beautiful Zoom about the, uh, the gift a horse can be. And I was just talking to some of the hosts in Austria, and they wanted to show us some of the horses that they have there because I, I adore them, but they were a bit further away. And now we're seeing one. Let me see, Elizabeth, if you could put on sound, we will see them. But basically, uh, I think we're seeing now, if you see one of the small screens, it's the mother, mother daughter horse there are two white ones really cool there you go <laughs> um i got the possibility of meeting them last summer and i'm very very grateful for them because uh, every time i get to play or work with horses or be with horses they start showing me something that i have not yet known so for me the world of animals and today we're going to do the gift of horses but for me the, it's almost you could put it into um the area of any animal and for me animals have this possibility of gifting us things that we're asking for that we're wondering about that we're curious about i have uh, i grew up with quite a lot of animals throughout my years uh, i was insisting as a kid to have animals and if i didn't get them i would borrow them from other people. So I would never give up having lots of animals. And I did start riding when I was seven, between six and seven, I started riding in Argentina. And then it has been quite a few years riding. And then I had a couple of years without riding. And with Axis, meeting Gary Douglas, I started riding again in Costa Rica. In all the countries you could start riding, it was in Costa Rica with the horses from there. They're quite small very speedy, uh, very energetic. So basically you think they do. <laughs> and you get to experience some amazing things with horses there. And he, Gary invites you as well to use the Axis Consciousness as tools with animals. And at that moment, it was with horses. And during the last 11 years facilitating classes, going to classes, going to a lot of classes with Gary, where he, always talks about animals especially horses because he really really loves horses and he, he keeps on saying every time everything i've learned i've learned from horses i keep hearing it hearing it but it doesn't really click until a couple of years ago where it really clicks where i see him working with them and using the tools it was one of the facilitator classes with conscious horse conscious rider and i see him using the questions, being aware, asking the horses. And I was like, oh, this is so simple. And the horses respond energetically and also in action, showing the possibilities in that moment, especially if you do not have conclusions. For me personally, last 12 years, I had a dog that did the same. And I always asked her to show me something that I don't know show me something different, always, always asking her to contribute for us to become more aware. When I changed my point of view, she also showed up different. When I asked her to show me something, it came someday. It didn't mean it would come directly, but it would show up. And if I asked her even to contribute, support my business, that also would show up. So there is no linearity with animals. They're there for us. I would say 100%, and especially if you're willing to be present, ask, and also willing to receive. It's easy for us people, we, we learn to put animal in boxes. A dog does this, a cat is like this, a horse is that. I mean, like, uh, cats are more distant, or whatever you say. You know these generalizations we have about animals? are very interesting because we basically box animals into a box. Uh, and that is very, if you're willing to ask an animal about something and you let go of what they, what you think they can contribute with, you also allow them to show up greater. And this was one of the starting points for me. If I don't have a point of view about my dog, what can she do and be and contribute with? 
And I also demanded of her to be aware. I also am, I demanded her of, to choose. And it's not a thing that happens from one day to another, because I also saw how I had been programmed how to train a dog. And I basically unprogrammed myself of that. Also willing to be aware uh, that there's certain things. A dog will not necessarily talk in English with me like I'm talking, but what if they can talk? I have noticed, for example, personally, that animals understand language and words so much more than we think. Colors. A lot of the definitions we have of animals, I started letting them go. Really, every definition, every conclusion. So when I stand in front of animals, let's say horses, because that has been one of the, what would I say, incredible, joyful, also surprises what they can be for us, what we cannot expect or, or imagine that they can be. Because I can ask them about things. It's so funny. I can ask them about things so about social media or business or money. And when I'm with them, the information starts just, it's almost like it starts bombarding me or they show me, or if they show me in the moment I see, I'm aware of something, they'll show me or they'll make the energy more, more, um, uh, more clear. It's almost like they get like spotlights on them. And I was like, oh, I can't. It's just so freaking clear. So they will contribute to whatever you're asking if you're willing to receive it in any way possible, in any way. So for me, it's always the starting point. Are you willing to allow an animal, a horse, to contribute to your life, to your business, to your relationship, to your body? And everything you've decided what a horse, for example, can be or contribute with, will you destroy and uncreate that? Good and bad, right, wrong, put and fuck all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And this is for horse people, but also for non-horse people. And if you've never heard the clearing space, you can clear in clearing statement. Then I, then I can definitely address that too. Uh, what does it say there? I can't do anything. Okay. Uh, if, what if a dog is a family dog? I can clear my interesting point as you, but the rest of my family not. Is that a matter in that, is that matter in that change? Well, the thing is you create a relationship with your dog and every person in, in the family will create their relationship with their dog. Will it matter? Maybe a little, depending how clear you're willing to be with the dog. So for example, when, I am with certain dogs that start connecting with me. I will let them know it's okay with me. Don't mind the rest. I'll just, we, we can just have a chat now. So I, I also acknowledge what's around me, but I don't make it wrong. I just say, I just state it. When you want to build up this relationship connection uh, and communication with your animal, you have to give it a little bit of time. Be very clear allowing also the animal to choose. I have this thing where I allow animals to choose, but I also request them to be aware. So this is both sides. I'm committed to it. I do expect them to start being, like I request, ask, encourage them to also be committed. That's the deal and deliver. When my dog, for example, had dog sitters that were checking out a lot, sometimes afterwards I would, when I picked her up, I would notice we weren't as connected. She was a little bit in a different, like a bubble, a bit checked out. And I would look at her and like, huh, come on. One time I was out riding the same day, I think, or the next day I got her back and she would run in between horses and stop to smell on something. She had never done that before. It took her 10 minutes to understand how to go out riding with lots of horses and me on a horse. She would like try to find me because she had never seen me up on a horse before. She was, I don't know, 10 years when this started. I can't remember. I think it was 10 years. 
or nine maybe. Um, and she would just look. And then after 10 minutes, she exactly know where her point position, where to run, even between all the horses in the front. She would run and look at the hole to be aware what's going on and still come back and get in the right place. And when she checked out, she would do silly stuff. And I was like, that was dangerous, basically. It could create an accident. So I told her, Sinya, check in now. You have to be aware if you want to be here. And I was so intense energetically, there was no, for me, no chance that she's not checking in. It's 100% happening. So I cannot doubt what I'm asking for either. And if you doubt, ask them to show you what's possible. If you have a puppy or a smaller um, animal in the beginning, I can also say it's like kids. Yeah, they're interested a couple of seconds and then they're like, yeah, bye bye. So they have a different um, way of being with you. Not always, but very often it's different with puppies and small cats until they grow up a little bit. And start early or start whenever. There's no such thing. It's they're too old. It doesn't work. It might work. <laughs> that would be funny if somebody says, um, oh, I'm so sorry, you're over 40. You can't come to an access class. <laughs> Awareness only works when you're younger. <laughs> uh, it would be hilarious. Or you have to pay more because it's going to take longer time for you to become aware. <laughs> I mean, all these things are really funny, but we sometimes project them at animals. And for me, I've heard people say you can't learn an old, old dog to sit or train. And I was like, I've, I don't understand it. I've trained work with dogs until they like basically end their lives. And there's never been a problem. We have to be willing to receive where they are and see how it works for them. Just because you learned with one dog, it won't necessarily work with the next dog. And if we look at horses, it's the same thing. Every horse can be different how you're being with them. And I love when I have classes, because people come up, they have never met a horse, or are horse trainers, teachers, breeders, and the combination of that, seeing, a person that doesn't have so many definitions with somebody that sometimes has more definitions and have a projection it can it can just be different because if you have if you know how a horse is we unconsciously also project that easier at them than if you don't know them so we also box the animals into how they are, their behavior, um, what they can or what has been hard for them or something like that. If you're willing to destroy and create your relationship, your definitions, your conclusions, expectations, judgments, every day with them or very often, what else can happen? How can they also show up? For you and this is where I love animals horses they start facilitating you if you ask for it if you decide they are like this or they are that then you will also not see the gift that's in front of you when you start interacting with them asking them a question and there is space for them to show up for them to contribute to you they will start showing up it might not be exactly how you would like it to be in the beginning and it might be very different in general but the fun part is i've very few times i've seen an animal not be interested in more awareness more contribution more choice but it's in the beginning, it can be different because they're so used to a certain thing. There's Leone with her dog. <laughs> it's the small girl there in Austria. She's so cute. Um, but this is where also we have put, <laughs> they can distract me with dogs. <laughs> That's very easy. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, with animals in general. Um, where was I? 
our definitions also stop them. Because basically when we have a definition or a projection at an animal, it's like putting up a wall. I, I'm all, only allowing to receive what is clear to that definition. So if I have defined a horse to be slow or um, whatever, um, nervous or uh, having a bad day, I don't know, whatever it is, there's this wall where they are on, I only allow them to show up in that energy, in that possibility. I'm doing it very squared now too, because of course they can change. But if you're allowing them to be whatever they want to be, whatever they choose to be, and of course, I don't want them to be crazy or doing something like that, but they don't. They usually, when you open up a space of possibilities for animals, they show up more with you. No difference to people. The one thing that I see different with horses, they don't have a point of view about you. And again, when I say horses, it's animals as well. So you can apply this to any animal. I haven't used all the tools with every animal on the planet. Definitely not. Uh, and there will be some differences. But let's talk about uh, horses because they are, what I love with horses, if you have not worked with horses yet, they're big. They're majestic. They are clear in their energy. And when you start asking them questions and using any of the access tools with them, you'll see things happening and ask them what they desire. Cause they can, sometimes they want a clearing. Sometimes they want, Oh God, entity clearings. If you have done an entity class or been to foundation, you have these tools called entity clearing. You can do any clearing with them. You'll see the energies changing and shifting. And they have basically for me, when I show up with a horse, I start asking them for whatever I can be, whatever I can choose, whatever I can do. And it's so interesting for me to see they'll basically change something, change the energy. They'll show me in some way. And then that moment, I trust them and I move forward with that. So it's playing with the tools, trying them out with animals, with a horse. I remember uh, being in Spain, sitting in a horse waiting to be riding out. And this is my becoming to be horse. I didn't know at that time I would have a horse in Spain. And I was sitting there just waiting and I was like, huh, I wonder how the world truly is connected. How is everything connected to each other? And I was just wondering things in my head, you know, when you're asking some question, you're curious about how el what else is possible. And it didn't take a minute. And it was like in front of me, the space I'm opening up and my whole energy started expanding, connecting to everything and going out in the universe. And I was sitting just relaxing on a horse and the whole universe is in front of me. And I was like, okay. Thank you, horse. And I always thank them. Whatever shows up, I thank the animals. I thank, I thank the horse. And it was just like an instant connection with her. And it was an amazing ride with her in that moment. I was like, wow. Uh, so I ask a question and something shows up. Can it be that easy? I, and, I, and I know it. And I still get surprised every time how willing they are to contribute to us but it started by asking a question, having no expectation. And in that moment, I wasn't even expecting her to do that. I was just wondering. And then I was like, oh, of course I can ask her. I do that all the time with my dog. So let's start this. Let's do it with all the horses I meet. And I just started doing that. And I often just say, hi, and then whatever I'm going to do with them, if I have a class, if we're going to go riding. And for me, it's an obvious energy that they're going to be showing up with me. I remember when I came to Austria, to this beautiful place that I'm going to again in August. And I got into the stable that have kind of 19 horses. And I just said, hey, guys, we're having a class. And the energy was like, Woof. it was present. And I was like, Oh boy, I know they have been waiting, but I did not know how clear it was for them until I was standing there. 
And, and they were just like, yes, finally, we're going to work. We're going to do something. And these are horses that already work because it's a riding school and they love working with that. But again, they, they also can do so much more. When I hear somebody say, oh, the horses are the most happiest when they're on the field eating, I was like, well, I would have to ask them. I don't know that. Sometimes they're just bored eating. What do we do when we're bored? Eat. No, I, I'm just joking because also horses love to eat, so I'm not that, but they also have so much more possibilities to contribute, but we're not asking for it. And they're not like a lot of us that are crazy and want to just do and create more, 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 more. That's not how they are. They're like, yeah, I'll eat here and enjoy my life. If you ask or you want me to do more, I'm going to do that too. So then they're on with us but otherwise they will just enjoy their lives and have a great life. So what gift can we receive from them? And even if you're never gonna meet a horse um, and you're sitting here and wondering, yeah, but what's this for me? Maybe you do have another animal at home. And we can still just, you can just, Think of a horse, maybe you have seen one or there's one around where you're living or you have been riding at some point. Like for example, now I'm tapping into, I'm, I'm just thinking about the horses I met in Austria, the ones you know they showed us before we started. And then I just connect with them. Basically, I'm thinking of them. And what I personally do is I start lowering my barriers. I just lower my barriers to whatever. I just lower them and lower them. And then I often just start talking to them. So if there's something going on in my life, I ask them to contribute. Hey, can you help me with this? I'm having um, problems with blah, 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 blah. Or uh, I'm quite stressed. Or I'm having a really bad day. Or I'd like to create more. Hey, can you help me? I need a little bit more support. And this is where I allow them to contribute to me no matter what. And I don't doubt that it doesn't work. I don't doubt. So what if we never doubted what we know? So everything does allow us where we allow to doubt our knowing. Can we destroy and uncreate that? Good and bad, right, wrong, from fuck all nine shorts, boys, and beyonds. Because for me, doubting means I'm just stopping the possibilities instead of exploring them. Try them. It's like when we were a kid and we got a new toy, would we not try it out if we, if we didn't know how it worked? Would we just lay, let it, like, lay it on the table and ignore it? Or would we just start trying it out? And this is where, for me, this is consciousness and awareness. We just try things. And I ask, for example, especially with animals, I ask them to show me how I, I, how I can talk to them, what they can contribute with. So I ask them. I don't have to figure it out. And they don't have this problem with language things where they decided, I don't understand, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I, I joke a lot with um, my classes when I come to other countries. Uh, I always say, well, horses first, yeah, they have speak the language of energy. And then they all speak Swedish. And then they own the other languages in that country. And the funny part is it always comes to a point where, where the animal reacts really great with Swedish. And I was like, see, guys, they know Swedish. And of course they haven't. But it's, it's not necessarily always the language. It's the energy you're being. And they are also used to your language. So if you are talking German with them, they will also understand that. I remember 
Katja, the horse I have now, when I started talking to her Swedish, there was where like there was no there was no exchange. She was like, huh? <laughs> and I really got the energy, huh? And I was like, and I said it in Spanish. And there was instant connection. I was like, oh well, it's gonna take a little longer here. <laughs> Maybe it's rules points of views about language. I never thought about that. <laughs> it's the guy that handles my horse. He doesn't speak anything else in Spanish. But I, what I kept on doing with her, I kept on saying things in Spanish and Swedish. Swedish and Spanish. So I just kept on mixing the languages with her. And then at some point, it didn't matter. And I cannot say, was it that or what it, was it something else? And I don't really care. It's not important to, for me to explain it afterwards that this is the right way or this is the way it works. You can make it work in your magical way. And for me, it's also the question, are you willing to allow an animal or animals to contribute to your life even if they're not close to you? even if you don't really know them well, even if you don't own them. I know when you own an animal, you do create often more of a connection, but it's also something we're trained to be. It's the same thing that we receive from things more when we have bought it than if we look at them and just adore them. We often create a separation if we can't afford them or can't buy them. Um, for those who don't know, I also have a jewelry business and some people can't buy the jewelry in that moment. And I always tell them, but I allow the jewelry to contribute to you no matter what, even if it's physically not in your possession, why would that matter? So what if all the separation that we create with our points of views what if we allowed that to change and we allowed everything to contribute to us? So think of an animal that you might know a little bit or you have an animal. Let's start lowering the barriers. It's just lowering the, I just like lowering the energy it becomes a little bit more vulnerable. And what you also can do is to pull a bit of energy through the, from the universe, through the animal, through you, and out again. Cool. And then ask something. Whatever you want to ask, ask the animal to contribute or create with you. Cool. One thing that popped in my head is that I don't ask from lack, that I don't have it. I ask them to contribute to whatever I, I would like to create. And then I let it go. And you can do that as often as you like. And every time something shows up I've asked for, I thank them. I say, thank you. Thank you for helping or thank you for contributing. And some animals, I also make some kind of deal and deliver. Uh, with my dog, when I started doing deal and deliver, it was quite funny. Um, I remember one because she loves being outdoors. Whether, no matter if it's rainy, cold, warm, I, she didn't care. I cared. <laughs> so I told her, hey, let's go to Spain and not have winter so we can be outdoors so much more. And I was like, I would like to drink my coffee outdoors um, in the morning and it's not freezing cold. And I said to Sinia, we just have to create a, little, like, create a little more so it becomes super easy to be in Spain over winter. We created three winters, or three winters, it becomes five, six months, um, half the year in Spain with total ease. And I was like, huh, thank you. And I, I thanked her every time. 
But I was also very, very clear that I required her support. I also required a dog sitter in Spain. I did not know people. And everything got created all the time. By then, I also knew with her, um, she was basically kind of my business partner, co-creator of things. So it was very simple. She had trained me well. And it was a very active dog. She's not here anymore, but she was very, very active showing me. Like she was, she started already when she was young. If, if somebody checked out, if I checked out or I was, you know, my thoughts or somebody in my room, she would come and slap people on the leg. <laughs> like, doof, doof, come on, come back. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. And it was funny when you have sessions with clients and she would just like be up in their face because they're in a energy uh, but she was always willing to be there for people. And then I started acknowledging that and seeing, ah, what else would she like to do and be? And I must say, I'm very, very grateful for my ex-boyfriend at that point because he had no prior experience with animals or dogs. So he didn't know the dog training style. So he would just do and say things that nobody does. He would just talk to her, basically. Um, he would not do commandos. He would not give her treats like any, cause he, she did something good. She, he would just say, good. <laughs> he would never give her something for that. He would spoil her a lot, but never because she, in that moment we should give her like a little snack or something like that. And I saw this working so well with her. I continued. And I challenged all the thoughts I had, what is right and wrong with dogs. And she started showing us what's truly possible with the access tools. We ended up training or having, helping misbehave dogs. We don't come from training dogs, but we ended up helping people training their totally crazy dogs. <laughs> and those are the fun parts. Every animal can show you something if you let go of their point of if you let go of the point of view that you've decided they are. Look at the girls there. Oh my god, they're sharing the bars throw. You guys are making me jealous. <laughs> Next time we'll tell everybody, you need a bars partner for this Zoom. <laughs> or a horse. That would be really funny. Next Zoom, you can join if you're sitting or laying down on your horse. <laughs> Should we do that? <laughs> I could not. <laughs> I need to find a horse then first so I can live it, live up to it myself. Um, and if you don't have a horse in your life at the moment and you would love to have one or you would love to be around a horse, just also, I start putting pocking all my decisions or points of views, how that should show up. And then I start asking horses, could you show me where you are? Where, where can I contribute? Where can I help out? Or I start having writing lessons or doing something with horses. You got to start doing something or having a commitment or choosing something if you want them to be around you. I mean, I also grew up, you know, you, you learn that you buy a horse and then you train it and you're there. And like here in Sweden, they are in a stable or outdoors in summer. Uh, and often it's one person or two persons per horse, something like that. Uh, we're now even looking at having like five, six people owning a horse. And then together we will have enough time. It was so funny to see new different ways of taking care or creating with a horse. Um, where I don't feel that I need to own horses. I do see myself going to have a lot of horses. <laughs> and I was like, huh, wonder where that will be or how that will look like. But it's something that's very clear to me. It doesn't have to be today. It doesn't have to be tomorrow. But I just know. And then I asked them, hey, guys, can you show me where we're going to be, what we're going to do? I'm definitely going to have y'all. And it's so funny because one of the horses I got to know quite a couple of years ago, he's a big hugger, very central. Um, he, he can caress your whole neck here and you get like orgasmic vibrations in your whole body. It's a very central horse. 
very um, also sensitive in the energy and it's huge. It's one of the biggest horses I've been sitting on. Um, but he was very, if you hug him or you stand with him, you basically start meditating. You fall asleep almost. I, I was there once the first time I met him and I started touching it and I was like, whoa. And I was like, I was so spaced out. I was so relaxed. And the horse guy comes back and I'm like, what's going on? Do you fall asleep? I'm like, almost? Yeah, most people do that with him. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Um, but that's one horse. Uh, it's for me, it's such a healer horse. It heals people very, he, he just loves healing people. So that horse, for example, I know who owns it. I don't see it anymore. But if I have a place, like say I would have a place in Spain or Portugal, I would ask if I could buy this horse. There's some horses around the world where I know, oh, that horse I would love to have. But I don't have to force it now. I don't have to have, but I constantly connect with this horse. I constantly just tap in, talk. Oh, it's still there. Hey, thank you. And, and sometimes when my body requires something, I ask for help from them. I don't need to be in front of them, but it's beautiful to do that too. But we can receive anything we ask for. And I also know when you do this, when you have, sorry, when you have this experience with animals very clearly, you have a harder time doubting yourself afterwards. And that's one of the things, that's one of the things I, I really love. Can we ask for, for what? <laughs> um, Rosanne, you can ask me anything. <laughs> or for our animals that have crossed, oh yes, you can, definitely. I'm exploring that myself at the moment because my dog left, can't remember anymore, I think it was in April. And it's amazing to see, because for me, the, like when they die, people or animals, they still have an energy, entities and all that. And Senia is different. And I have not, it's a very different connection on the other side. So I'm asking her to show me what's possible in a different way. Yeah, it's six, you have our whole herd on the other side. That's awesome. <laughs> Yes, you can connect to them. Um, start talking to them. Ask them. Do It's almost like explore for you what's possible. I have one dog uh, that left after two years with me. Very, very, um, it was a very special connection I had with her. I wasn't, I was kind of sick during those two, two years. So she was, ex she was there um, healing and working with me. And the day, basically the weeks I got better, uh, she left. That dog went away energetically very quickly. She was there for a while. She was even coming back physically and touching me in my body for a couple of months. And then if I tried to connect with her, it's just space. It's not there anymore. Like it's doink. <laughs> and Sinia has a similar energy, but she's still pointing out different things for me. So I'm exploring it. The, the amount I can receive from her at the moment, I ask for that. And then what else? What else? What else? I never see a limitation if they're in this side here or on the other side. I, I do love them physically here. I can't deny that. Um, but there's still, if we look at the gift that they can be and the contribution, I'd love for you to explore that and Maybe we should have a call in a couple of months and you let me know what you explore because all of us can do this. All of us can create an amazing connection with animals. We just also have to do it. So now at the moment, I don't have a dog and I see the difference of I actively have to choose to talk, to create. Because when I had my dog around, the whole world of animals was open. She was almost like a door opener or port. Like it was like port, the, the energy, the animal world was here in my room. Um, or when we were out in nature, nature was more alive than it is now. And I can still create it, but she created this energetic connection that was 
I don't know, maybe to a different dimension. I can't say it in words. It was just an energy. And for 12 years, it was just like, that's how it is. And when you don't have it anymore, when she's not there in that way, I am receiving a lot of awareness about what we chose, what she showed me, what we were creating. I'm like, oh, Jesus, God, all of this people don't have. I'm like, hmm, everybody should have an animal. <laughs> I'm not sure everybody's great with an animal, but I, I, maybe they should just borrow one for a week. <laughs> and then we can always clear them afterwards if they messed it up. Um, I'm just joking. Everybody should, yes. And I think also what I would introduce for people is almost like, it's almost like having a license. You get to learn how to be with an animal instead of, oh, I know everything best or I've read it in a book. Um, I think this is the same with kids. Um, it's fun you have a license to drive, but then the rest... <laughs> figure it out <laughs> um but i'm also very grateful that there are so many seminars and classes when you are curious about an area you can choose to get more awareness and information um one of the things i'm very i got very aware of the last years with access is the gift a question is because when I ask truly a question, I'm inviting everything to contribute. And in a lot of areas in this world, people are telling you, this is how it is. It's not this, it's that. So they're telling you what's right and what's wrong. And in that moment, they're also invalidating your awareness because it might be different for you. And I have also learned quite a lot of animal communication communication before and at some point when i started access i was like this is much easier the same with entity clearings i used to clear energies of homes uh, long before access i was doing feng shui and uh, space clearing and all that and i would clear uh, energies from homes i would do a lot of things and it was quite a bit of a ritual and work and it worked and then i came to access and i was like Oh God, this is so much easier. And, and then I started exploring that and the same thing with animal communication and animals are also different. So when I came from the dog world and started connecting again with horses, I first tried to translate from one animal to another, but they were talking differently. And then one day I'm like, oh, I just have to ask the horse to show me. And it's an energy thing. They won't go to you and say, whoa, 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 whoa. they won't talk to you and tell you, hey, you have to do this. You have to stand there and talk to me and look me in the eyes and blah, blah, blah. They'll just basically start connecting or creating some energy with you. And if you allow it, you'll, you'll get aware of it. But don't doubt. And don't try to figure it out. Just do it. Whatever pops at some point, try it when i was in austria with these beautiful ladies that are swapping bars uh, i mean there's a stable with 19 horses and you're like i'm like this is this is like paradise for me <laughs> i have so many different ones i can talk to um because all of them will say something different it's not that i know their whole story or history often they don't tell you so much about that but it was very interesting because after the class, you'd have to ask Elizabeth at some point or the ladies, the girls, um, they, I don't know how they came to choosing it, but basically that they had asked the horses in what stable they want to stand or what, you know, they have their own stable, their own box, sorry, their own box. Uh, and that's kind of their home over the night or when it's bad weather, they're outdoors a lot, but they still have their box. And usually very often, they keep being in the same one for many, many years. And I think so was it here too. They knew one or two needed to move. But what did they do? They started asking every horse where it wanted to be. And I was like, what? <laughs> and almost I, what I heard, almost all of them got a new position where to stand. And I was like, that is freaking cool to hear that. 
them doing that because that's really asking the horses they know and of course when you move horses around there will be some new energies they have a new partner and that one ah do they need to end up with you on the next i think have they can have a little bit of fun with that um but then there's a different space between them and i'm very curious how it is in there um they've also changed some of the boxes how it's inside in them and all that and i was like wow but they were truly willing to ask Oh yeah, Elizabeth's right. So yes, it was very cool. I think I'm going to interview you, Elizabeth, at some point about that. I need that on tape because it was one thing. I was like, "Wow!" And I, I, I literally asked, "How did you guys do that? You just ask them?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, they, they, they learned to ask questions." <laughs> but I was like, they learned to ask them, and they just did it. They just did it. There was another girl there also too. Um, that, oh God, I, she's going to be there in the next class. I also have to ask her about that because there was one horse that was going to get, you know, these new shoes or something. And it was very nervous. I can't remember exactly the stories. <gasps> Hi! Hi, girlies. Hey. If you have questions or you want to say anything, you're allowed to unmute at any time if you want to. But I do remember... Um, that one of them, I was nervous of getting new shoes. And then it was kind of, it was very quiet or, or relaxed. And I think Elizabeth asked, what did you do? And she just said, like, I talked to it. I told her something. I need to ask her because it was, and she was like 15 or something. Like that. I'm like, not doubting herself, just being whatever it takes or whatever is required. So animals respond a lot to whatever energy you're being. And I think we all of all of us know that more or less, but that's where you also have to be willing to be a leader. When you choose, you choose. You don't choose against. You choose and you create with them. So you're never against. You don't have to prove a point because they usually don't they don't receive you at that moment very well. <laughs> and there will be many times it does not work. You still continue. Animals, I, I remember when Sinia was getting a little older and she didn't want to listen. She made herself like, I don't hear, I'm older. And I was like, oh my God, you're using that against me. I, I laughed. I laughed so hard when I saw her manipulating me. And then the next second she didn't do it anymore because I saw it acknowledges and I was like, you're freaking amazing. And then she would hear everything. I'm like, okay, you can use that till whenever you want. I love it. And she did it <laughs> both with me and my father. And I was like, oh my God, we did my really. And since the class, they started to talk so much with us. Oh, oh my God, you guys are amazing. It was just so great to see how happy they were that they were all, they are changing, that we are changing. Yes. Oh yeah. Animals get really, really happy and happy and get like, they have this gratitude to us. When we change, they come along and they often choose even more to contribute to, to choosing more. Yeah, I have so many stories about that. But yes, it's so freaking too. You choosing more and everything around you will support you even greater. And animals get very, very grateful because they more or less get more connection with you when you're more aware because you're getting out of your head into an energy, to awareness. And that's where everything's possible. Everything's possible. And just be aware that they know this world better than we expect. I have this thing, I joke about it, but by now I, I, it's, it's only a joke outwards. But I, I say, oh, well, I always have classes of, about social media with horses. So when I, when I have my phone and I have with a horse, hey, do you want to know how Facebook works? Da, 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 da. And the funny part is, they're so good at it. They know exactly when a Facebook life is on. I've seen that so many times where they change and do stuff when I'm on a Facebook life and I'm not on. And of course there's an energy, but I have so many clients 
where they're animals and horses. They come literally up to the phone when there's a Facebook Live and you're talking or I've been talking. They come up to the phone and like that. And when it's done, they just walk away again. And I'm like, oh my God, these beings, they're crazy. And they've given me a lot more uh, ideas when it comes to social media. But I do ask them, but they surprise me every time. Every time. Um, I have a little story. Uh, was that my first class I had in Spain? I think so. Yeah, my first class in Spain that I did with horses, Conscious Horse, Country Rider. All of the participants were afraid of horses in one way or another. Um, two of them had had big accidents. Um, two of them were just afraid, and one, I think there were five of them. One was just had never been with horses so she was more insecure when we the first morning we went out to the field where they were eating their breakfast and they were free they were not tied up and the whole group was like we took three steps and they're like oh, we're getting closer to the horse oh and we had to like process and we did clearings every time we come closer to the horses and then we were standing a couple meters in front of them and they were so calm. And I know these horses quite well, but I've never had a class with them. One of them comes towards us and they're all like, and I was like, it's all good. It starts in front of one of the participants <laughs> and, just, and just lays down to the feet of her. <laughs> oh, look, there's a horse coming. Oh, is Mariella, is that your horse? Yeah, oh. no, that's, yes, that's it also, it's also from Elizabeth, that's illusion, also illusion. Oh, illusion, yes, with and the there, heart. there, over there is mine, my horse, that's Finny. Finny! And they're going home now, and <laughs> she's, she's standing by the door. <laughs> I want to go like, into my okay, home. Okay, it's time. <laughs> <laughs> it's time, mommy. <laughs> That's when you see that they do like their boxes and don't, don't, they do like to go in those too. Look how beautiful. Yeah, it's very different, but she's not um, happy at the night because when she's outside. So she, I don't know, but she always wants to be inside in the night. It's very funny. And when we're not picking up her, then she jumps um, across, you know, the, what's, oh, what's the, in English? Uh, the fence. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the one jumps the fence to the neighbors. <laughs> and and she and she also <laughs> hey, Liza. Hey. Oh my god. Beautiful. <laughs> so there you see a, like a little bit of a deal in the liver. So if you don't pick us up so we can go home at night, we're just gonna jump uh, somewhere else and create some problems for you. <laughs> Fence is a little too high, and once that was not very um, funny for her legs, <laughs> and that's why now we pick up her every time. <laughs> hey, look, it's very beautiful. He's so cool. Hey, Lucia. Oh my god, so different. Yes. <laughs> wow. <Ooh>. Yay. <laughs> Oh, hey, boy. Oh, you're so cute. Very pretty. <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> wow. Oh, we got to see that. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, yeah. One thing I also see in the classes with the horses is that they often adjust to where you are. So these horses, I saw that too. They were, hi, Yanni, hi. Hi. I needed to ask her what her shoe size was today. I st was standing, this is beside the Zoom. I was standing in a shoe shop and I saw some kid shoes. They were so adorable. I'm like, and it, sent, it was like written all of them, her, Leone. And I was like, I have no idea about shoe sizes for kids. I'm like, <laughs> A new world, but I'll have to ask you. Maybe. <laughs> no, she has bigger feet. Oh god. <laughs> yes, she's what's that to finish your question? Um Yeah, so 37 now. 
but we all have big food, Sefi, so <laughs> I have 41. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. Wow. You're not bigger than me. <laughs> I, I, had, I had 40 with 10 years. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yes, that family has I, big I always, I always wanted to create big, you know. <laughs> Think big. <laughs> You're doing it right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my God, that's beautiful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. And you, if, lots of you guys know I'm going to Austria to have one of the Conscious Horse, Conscious Rider classes in Austria. This is like the, the heart of Austria. It's really beautiful. But I have them often around the world now at the moment not so much as we have a little bit limited in oh there's coming again illusion limited traveling right but one of the things that we're willing to explore the world of horses or animals around you wherever you are like you, you can connect to or you sometimes i go past fields where there are horses and i just stand there for a moment and i lower my barriers i pull some energy and then i just start talking it doesn't I don't expect anything of them in that moment. I don't, but I'm still willing to create whatever is possible. Yeah, I like seeing this. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so sorry, <Yes>. we're out. <laughs> <laughs> A little, but that's okay. <laughs> I just, I just told her that we have to work now. <laughs> that's one. Of, that's one of the funniest things. Um, after the after the last class. Yeah. Um, because Lisen always said when we uh, work with the horses, just t tell the horses that we have to work now. And for me, yeah. it was a, <laughs> yes, of course, when we are standing on the grass and they don't want to work. But it was so funny because they are eating. And then, um, yeah, it, um, Lisen said, so guys, now we have to work and everyone um, stopped eating. And it was so funny to see because they were so focused, <laughs> like, okay we have work now. She said, we have to work. <laughs> the teacher is talking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was great. That's so funny you say that because that has happened quite a few times in almost every stable when I say, hey guys, they're like, oh, we're stopping. We're not eating now. I remember doing an anti clearing with one horse. It was in Spain. And, all, and I, was walk, I was in the box with one horse. And then I look around and all of them are staring at me. And I was like, oh, well. I guess this works for all of them at the same time. And they did not move. They hardly were breathing, I think. They were not easing, eating, although they had the breakfast in front of them. And a lot of horses are very, very, very uh, focused on eating. And they were all just like, no, we're on. And it was such a space seeing that. And it's the same in Austria. I'm like, hmm, maybe I'm a strict Austrian horse teacher. <laughs> or a Swedish strict horse teach I don't know but it's so funny to see if you're willing to be clear they're clear with you if I would have all my like points of views while well, they're eating breakfast so they have to eat breakfast and they're not going to listen to me because they're eating then I also project that so why would they connect with me why would they create with me but if I ask them hey we're going to do this now and I'm 100% that energy I'm not forcing it I'm asking for it. Oh, oh my God, I just want to kiss them and hug them. <laughs> I can feel they're, you know, they're so soft around the mouth. Oh God, they're so. So what gift can they be for you? I was like, oh, I, I do desire that everybody and especially also kids get the possibility to be with animals in general and receive what's possible the gift, the joy, the communication, because it's so much easier than we think what it is. Oh, thanks for allowing us to go with you, Mariella. That's so beautiful. Um, and also for us, of course, as adults as well, because there's a different world. But I meet a lot of people that have never been close to animals. There are that are so they say they're afraid very often. I notice they're insecure and then they choose to be afraid. Um, and we have a lot of them coming to classes. I have a lot of them coming to classes. And what I can only say is there's often a lot of awareness. But as they're not used to having them or connected in their daily life, um, it becomes this thing they separate. And funny enough, we start saying we're insecure or scared. 
and often there's a lot they're so aware like yeah. I, I know <laughs> you'll you'll see if you ever come if you're ever afraid of an animal please please go on an adventure to change that because you'll see what amazing gift there is and it changes in other areas of your life too there's nothing we need to be as afraid of but we can be aware of things um, of course, when we're working with horses, there's things to be aware of. It's quite big. It weighs a lot. It has fear four legs. I love some, I had one woman working in a horse and the horse has four legs. So it usually moves to balance, no? <laughs> and every time it moves, the body's like, oh, is it going to do something? I'm like, no, it's just moving. It's the same thing as I'm sitting on my chair and moving my butt. It's the same thing but their butt is much bigger. So their whole body is bigger. So the movements become a little bit bigger. And this is where we need sometimes some information to, oh my God, <laughs> you're, you're distracting me, Mariella, with all the horses. <laughs> I'm easily distracted with animals, that's for sure. I need one of those. Do not look there. <laughs> um, You don't need to be afraid of anything. Aware, yes. And sometimes we need some information. But if you are afraid of anything, give you yourself the gift to change that. Because going around the world being afraid of things, and they often add on and add on. And when I started changing everything where I could get a little bit scared or insecure or when I started changing that, it started changing to awareness. I got a lot more information in situation where you could be scared, but I, I got rather have the information than being scared. And it's the same thing with animals. Um, some animals will be very, very, very grateful to be with you. And they're having dinner now. Aww. Yes. Hello. <laughs> That's a new, is that the new box? Yes, it is. I see, I see things. <laughs> wow, it's big. Yes. <laughs> and we have a new window to the other horses there. Oh, perfect. Yes. And a window here and there. <laughs> it's a VIP box. Yes, it is. <laughs> or it's a, it's a what is it? <laughs> business class. Or <laughs> yeah. I, I always say, um, now we are going to your suite. <laughs> Perfect suite. You have the right the word. house suite. <laughs> and that's amazing. That's amazing. Yes. It's, it's really cool to see. We must almost have a photo from before and now, like when I was there. And to how it looks now, it's amazing. <laughs> Oh, that's the mother of uh of the other white horse, which you mean before, Trobina. Trobina, I know. Look at like, searching, oh. searching a new home. <laughs> yeah. Anybody that wants to contribute her uh, finding a new home, we can always contribute to that. It has a very good place, but it can be used more in a better way than in the, the riding place. We have here princess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can you show the one that looks like, um, oh, what's his name? Pippi Langstrom, you mean? Yes, there you go. Yes. <laughs> You mean Titsia? How did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Wait, one moment. A little bit of work. So there's a horse that's really big. Well, Pippi Longstocking didn't have that big of a horse, or it looked, but this one is humongous. But every time I meet it, it really just like has that energy for me. I'm like, wow. And it looks a little bit like that too. The last horse you get to see. Oh no. Oh my God. You guys just so much. <laughs> Yeah, it's huge. How many kilos is that? Like 600, 700? I can't remember. Mm, I think 800 or something 800. like that. Yes. And it's, it's a Norica, so a very a big and heavy horse. And very gentle. Yes. 
and he also has a blue eye. Oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Well, wow. here you got to see a lot of horses at the end now. Um, thank you everybody for being in. If you have ever a question about animals, you can always send me a question or ask me anything. I, I just love contributing with and for animals. And you're always invited to any of the horse classes, of course, but also willing to start exploring it with animals for you, physically close to you, but also energetically where you think there is a separation or a distance. What if there isn't? And what if you allowed nature or animals to contribute to you in your daily life? But one of the things for that to work is that you have to start asking for it. You have to be the one choosing. You have to be the leader of your life. So that said, just start, ex start, start exploring it. Thank you so much for everybody being here. And again, at any point, let me know if you need anything. <laughs> oh, I know I made somebody else co-host. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, get back to me if you start exploring things or with uh, the dogs that went over to the other side. If you get some more information or awareness, let me know. I'm always very, very curious. And ladies, I get to see you all in Austria. If anybody wants to join us in Austria, um, you're always welcome to that. It's, if I correctly date, 20 to 23rd. Um, yes, you're um, right. <laughs> is the English one. We have a German one where I talk German, and then we have a class where I talk English. <laughs> and like, uh, so that's going to be a fun exploration for me with languages, too. So thank you, everybody. And thanks for the horses for showing up, too. You're oh welcome. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, for ladies. And thanks for running bars. That was amazing energy, too. Yes, it was. I love the bars. <laughs> and thank you for the great Zoom. And I hope I see someone of you in Austria in August. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mariela. And thanks for showing the nice big ass. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's a very pretty ass. <laughs> and he's very comfortable. <laughs> he is. He is definitely comfortable. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you, Yasu, Yasu Dara, for translating into French. It's amazing. I did not know it was her first time. I did know that she's good with it. So I love exploring new things. So thank you so much for doing that. And let's see what else is possible. And have a beautiful evening. Mm -hmm. Bye.